Hi, I'm B from Next Mechanics, and on today's video, we're going to be making... Chibonka? So you might have read the video title and gone, Chibonka? Is that a typo? And I can assure you, it's not. See, a new LEGO Star Wars game has just released, the LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Probably heard of it. Best rated game of the year. Had five years extra development or something crazy like that. Yeah. During the lead up to this, I decided to revisit the old LEGO Complete Saga, a game from my childhood, and I think everyone's came across it at some point or another. Basically, Chewbonka is Chewbacca, but from that old LEGO game where he looks super derpy. So why him and not the more realistic Chewbacca, test my skills, make it as realistic as I could out of clay or do something like that? Why, why, why Chewbonka? Because <laughs> it's funny. And also because it was a birthday request. So to make this Chewbonka, we're going to be doing clay, like I did with the Cyber Bunny. I'll be getting really good at my sculpting skills, and I want to keep doing this, which will also end up helping me learn better 3D modeling skills in terms of proportions and that sort of a side of things. I did a drawing of Chewbonka on pen and paper just to get a vague sort of size of how I want him. You can also see that he's holding something kind of weird to do with a smiley face. That's going to be a poor clay to run, trust me. So with my paper drawing, I could then essentially trace it using thin wire to make a sort of skeleton, and with that skeleton, I could then cover that in aluminum foil to bulk him up and get all of the muscle masses done. The reason we use aluminum foil and not just covering it in clay right off the bat is because it saves money, and then you can cover him in a clay-like skin, which we'll be doing in just a minute. Still terrifying. Now, something I learned from last time I did this is I'm using air-dry clay rather than baked clay, so normally you would bake your clay when you're happy with something and move on, but I can't do that with air-dry clay, so what I would do is I would do one half, for instance in this case I did the legs first, wait for that to dry, and then when I want to do the upper half, I can grab onto the legs as something I have something to grab onto that won't just smush under my fingers. Now the thing for this project in particular was doing a lot of the hairs. It's Chewbacca, Bonka, and he wants to have lots of individual hairs, get that cool texture. I did think about doing a texture roller, and a texture roller is basically where you get a tube of clay, you stick it on a piece of wire, almost like a paint roller, but then you carve the texture you want into that cylinder. Then once you've done that, you can roll that onto the clay and that will imprint it with the texture. That seemed like an awful lot of faff for an effect that probably wouldn't turn out as good as I was hoping. So I stuck nice and simple and I just used a small X-Acto knife and cut each individual hair. Yeah, that was the easier alternative. Now, once my legs are dry and everything, I could move on to doing his torso and the arms and this was something quite interesting. I was having to figure out how to do like muscle masses. So he's got like shoulder blades and arches, stuff like that. Hands are a nightmare. Like I said every time, hands are super hard no matter what medium you work in. Due to the cyber bunny and stuff like that, I started figuring out how to do it better, the techniques for clay specifically and everything. And I think I started coming out pretty good. Now you might be wondering why I didn't do the other hand there, why it's in a weird sort of curl position, and that's to hold that pork, like I said earlier. Now the pork, you might be wondering why I haven't shown you it earlier, and uh, well, let's just say the footage of it isn't particularly great. Subscribe for more! But what this means is that I would wait until the pork was fully dried and hardened before I would start to do the other hand. That way I could wrap it around the pork and then take the pork out to let it dry separately so that way it didn't all just stick into one sort of globby, porky, wooky mess. So the head, I just made sure I spent a lot of extra time on it just to make sure that I got all that face nice and done properly. There's a couple times where I was like, yeah, I'm there! And then I would tweak it a bit. I'm like, oh no, hang on, if I move his cheek slightly to the right or to the left, you know, do that sort of a thing, then it would really improve the look. And of course, once I was done with the vague shaping, I would just cover it in fur texture. Everything needed fur texture. Now for his bandolier, which is like the ammo clip holder he has around him. And for that, I just did a thin, long noodle of clay with a little extra bit on the side to be the bag. And then for the actual ammo clips themselves, they were little squares that I cut out and added little notches in. And then I would let them dry separately and super glue them on once everything was hardened. It's much easier to do that to try and smoosh them on and risk losing the shape of the square. Now while we're waiting for that to dry, let's do a base for the figure so that way he doesn't have to stand by himself, we can just glue him to that. Now the way I did the base is I got a scrap piece of cardboard, cut circles out of it, then I would glue three of these cardboard circles together to add thickness, 
Then I would glue a thin cardboard strip around the edge to smooth it off. And then I would glue grass on top. But the problem with this is that it was too small. The technique was absolutely fine. That wasn't the issue. It was just too small for the figure. So I basically just did all of that again, but using a bigger dish to trace onto it. I also only did two layers instead of three layers of cardboard, because I think the thinner the base, the better it looked. Now for the painting. And I decided I was going to do a mock-up in Photoshop first, because I was super nervous about getting this wrong. And I did them a bit more brighter than they should have been, a sort of nougat -y brown but it's still got the point across that my sculpting is right, the eyes are there, the derpiness is right. This looks like Chibonka. Now, when I came to actually painting it, I tried to do some of the techniques I'd learned previously on the Cyber Bunny, doing the whole base colors, washes, dry brushing, all of that. And at first, it was not going very well. I went from making him super dark brown to being super bright brown, and then he was like a weird mix of like, I made him so pale that he was nearly white on the kneecaps because I hadn't dried the brush properly when doing dry brushing. But eventually, after several days of trying to figure this out, I managed to get to a happy medium of doing a base coat of brown, like a sort of standard bright brown, doing a wash of a darker brown, and then a dry brush of a much lighter brown. This all together gave him a sort of three-tone fur texture effect, which just made it look more vibrant, more textured, and then for little details like the bandolier or his eyes and stuff, I just went in with a tiny little paintbrush and just hand painted it all. Now with the base, the fake grass that I'd used that I bought from a craft store, it had a nice green to it already, but I thought, hmm, what if I tried doing some dry brushing on that to give it more texture, give it more variation, and it actually worked pretty well. Now for the Porg, and the Porg was a little bit harder than Chewbonka because he's smaller. To paint him so small, I got one of my craft tools and I shoved it up his bum. Then having this porg on a stick, I was able to maneuver him around and paint all of those fine tiny details on him without smudging it all the time with my fingers. And now for the finishing touches, Chewbonka's nails. <laughs> yes. Uh, to do that, I just used some of that wire that I previously used with the skeleton, some offcuts of the wire, and just cut tiny little nubs that I could then super glue into the fingers. But with all that said and done, this project was much easier than I was expecting it to be. I think I'd hyped it up as being more stressful than it was because I had a deadline and it had to be done by that deadline, and that's ended up delaying things like the axolotl armor that I'm planning on doing next video. You will be seeing this, don't worry. So, yeah. Enough of the faff. Let's have a look, shall we? I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy Look in the mirror, if he is no friend to me It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry It's time to break up so I can make a better me Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time and some clarity To find your identity, it's mine He is so derpy. Oh, so very derpy. I really like how this project has turned out. I think I've managed to get the essence of Chewbonka <laughs> into clay. Sorry, I can't, it's just so stupid looking. <laughs> I think I managed to get the right blend between Chewbacca's proportions and Chewbonka's face. And I'm really happy with how this looks. If I was gonna do anything differently for like a second time, I think I might want to have spent more time sculpting the pork's face. He's a little bit sort of puffy faced and puffy cheeked and not quite right. And the nails, I wish I hadn't used metal for the nails. They look decent, but again, if I'd used hardened bits of clay and smushed them into the hands while they were still soft clay, then I think that would have been a better effect. Possibly weaker, but a better look. The only other thing I'd say is he's technically missing clips on the back, the bandolier clips. It doesn't look bad, it looks fine, but if I was going for more accuracy points to Chewbacca, Chewbonka, I might want to have added more of those. But no, I think 
overall, other than those like few major points, he's basically perfect. This is this is exactly how my brain envisioned it. So it's really quite fun to see it just on the desk in front of me now. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this build video. I've got plenty more of those. And I've started a new thing called Transformers Tuesday. You've probably seen some of those videos already. They're little shorter videos where I review action figures from my Transformers collection. And I give my opinions and thoughts on them. So yeah, that's right. Build videos are back. I'm not intending to not do them. It's just that I'm not stressing to get them out as much anymore. So that means that there might be longer gaps in between build videos, but they are definitely still happening. So thank you for watching. Make sure to uh, like and do all of that various stuff. And I will catch you probably in four weeks again. Yeah, it's been a while since I did a build video. Bye. <laughs>